Hi there, my name is Ryan, I'm an instructor. We're gonna take a closer look today at the traffic pattern around our airport and are generally around all airports. Now traffic patterns are fairly standardized among aviation. However, each airport sometimes has little differences, so it is important to check your uh, airport information in the chart supplement or the airport facility directory that um, information source has kind of had two different names, so you might hear it called either thing. It's the exact same document, set of pages with a whole bunch of information about a whole bunch of different airports. Here in New York, you're using the Northeast chart supplement, and one thing that you'll read is runway 22, which faces 220 degrees, which is going into the wind today, so that's the runway we're going to use today has a right traffic pattern. So the standard at airports, the standard traffic pattern is a left pattern. And what that means is you're making left turns as you fly in a rectangle around the field. Left turns are great because normally the pilot sits in the left seat, the driver's seat, so to speak, in America. And uh, left turns, it's much easier to look over your shoulder, look out the window, make left turns. Some airports, due to noise abatement, like flying over the town of Montgomery here, or airspace, we have Stewart Airport. It's only about seven miles from us. So their airspace is about five miles from the airport. So we would be very close if we flew a regular traffic pattern here. So we use right traffic on runway 22, and you would find that out in the chart supplement and reading the information about the airports. So we're going to take a look at the traffic pattern today. The traffic Let's pattern. Traffic pattern taxing up one way two two. Traffic pattern is a rectangle around the field, consisting of four legs. The first leg is the departure leg. That is what you're on as soon as you take off, from when you're on the runway and start rolling to when you take off. You continue flying straight on the runway heading. That's your departure leg. After that, you make a turn onto the crosswind leg. Because we generally take off into the wind, it kind of makes sense that if you turn 90 degrees to that, you are now flying crosswind, or 90 degrees to the wind, give or take. After that, you turn on another very appropriately named leg, the downwind leg. I'm just gonna park here to uh, do a quick run-up check. And I'm gonna set my parking brake. So after the crosswind leg comes the downwind leg. Now it's called the downwind because if you take off and land into the wind so that you have less speed across the ground, when you're going the other way, the opposite way, you are going downwind or with the wind. And in that leg, we're gonna do a pre-landing check, kind of by memory when you're in the pattern because it probably would not be safe to grab a checklist and read it while flying in a traffic pattern, usually with other aircraft. And the idea of the traffic pattern is so that we can all share the same airport and the same runway safely in a very predictable way. After the downwind leg, we're gonna make another 90 okay, degree turn. Air Force Air Papa joining right 45 downwind running 22 Orange County. We're gonna make another turn onto our base leg, it is called. So between downwind and our final where we come in to land is our base leg. And then, I just said it, our final leg is called final, and that is your nice straight approach to the actual landing. So those are four legs of the rectangle. Departure, crosswind, downwind, base, and final. Orange County traffic bearing departing runway 22. He looks like he's in a hurry, huh? Orange County Traffic West, that's for zero, Papa, right now we're in runway 22, Orange County. So we have one person departing runway 22 right now, and then somebody is on the downwind. I got eyes on them over there. And this is where radio communications come in. So Orange County Airport is a pilot-controlled airport or a non-towered airport, meaning that there is not a control tower here. This makes it a great airport to learn at because you don't have to worry so much about talking to a tower and getting clearances and following their directions. 
what we do at a non-towered or a pilot-controlled airport. Helicopter, uh, cutting across runway 26 over to the fuel pump, Orange County. Is that we self-announce. So we make radio calls saying where we are and what we're doing along the way. And that allows everybody to follow the cardinal rule in aviation, which is see and avoid. So if we tell people where we are and what we're doing, it helps them see us and avoid us. And we want to be seen and avoided. We also want to know where everybody else is. So knowing where to look can be super helpful. All right, so I'm going to follow this center line, and I will not cross this hold short line. And I don't even really need to get Orange right County, up Orange next County, to it. Papa at the right base, two, two. Orange County. So we are here. I'm going to put my parking brake on. And I'm going to do a pre-takeoff check before we go. My landing light's going to go on. Taxi light's going to go off. My flaps are going to go to takeoff. My fuel pump is on. My doors are locked. My transponder is on 1200 for VFR. And it's transmitting my altitude as well. I'm also going to grab the checklist and do my pre-takeoff check. Flaps are to takeoff. Fuel pump is on. The canopy is locked. Transponder. My heading bug is set to runway 22 or 220 degrees magnetic heading. Orange County traffic Strobe lights are on. Pop out the final runway 22 Orange County. My, let's see, heading bug strobes, paying attention to what time it is. And then my parking brake, my landing lights, and my abort plan. So every time before we take off we go over quickly the abort plan just in case anything doesn't go as planned you want to act swiftly and effectively so if there's anything abnormal as i start my takeoff roll i'm going to bring power back and just roll to a stop and get off of the runway if i've rotated and taken off and i have runway ahead of me this is a 5,000 foot runway which is fairly long i'm going to bring power back to idle and I'll land on the remaining runway. I can get my landing flaps down to help me slow down and, and uh, use the runway that is ahead of me. If I have not yet reached our pattern altitude, which is 1,000 feet above the ground, or 1,400 on my altimeter, I am going to continue straight if I have any problems. I'm not going to try to turn around below that altitude. Can it be done? Yes, it can be done from lower than that. Is it a statistical likelihood of a good Orange outcome? County Tugo, Sierra no. is presently uh, nine miles to the northwest inbound from left traffic, runway four, Montgomery. Orange County, be advised, runway 22 is being used right now. Orange County, traffic, what is the first air Papa off with runway 22, staying in a pattern, Orange County. Hey, Montgomery, you still using 04? Runway 22, sir. Gotcha, 22, thanks for that. All right. So I'm gonna give these guys that just did a touch and go a little bit of room so I'm not chasing up behind them. And then we are gonna depart. Let's go ahead through the traffic pattern. What I'm gonna try to show you is that flying the pattern you're kind of putting a whole bunch of skills together and a great way to be able to do that is to kind of create these checkpoints for yourself. Each step along the way, instead of trying to do all of it at once, just piece by piece and always be looking ahead to what am I doing right now? What is the next step? Okay, I'm there. What am I doing right now? And what is the next step? Keep it simple, make it easy on yourself. It makes you look like a much better pilot. Orange County, Diamond 3 Delta Alpha, departing runway 22, right close traffic, Orange County. There's my departure call. I'm Orange County traffic, traffic, Warrior 728 Whiskey Fox, is 5 to the north, inbound for runway 26, full stop Orange. So there is somebody landing on runway 26, which is the other runway. They are allowed to do that at a pilot controlled field. There is no tower. I'll keep an eye out on them just in case they need to go around or they miss their approach, anything like that. As I make this turn, I'm confirming runway 22. I see the numbers on the pavement. I can confirm my magnetic heading is 220 on my compass, and the runway is clear. So I'm going to continue with my takeoff. I'm going to smoothly apply full power. I'm going to maintain that center line. I'm going to see RPM should be 2,000 or greater, and they are. My airspeed is alive here. 
I'm looking for about 50 knots to rotate, and we're gonna fly it right off the runway. Now on the departure climb, the best way to do this is to get an idea of the pitch attitude that you climb at, and then use your airspeed to confirm. So I wanna climb at about 60, 65 right now with the flaps down. So I'm pitching for what attitude I've kind of learned on these airplanes. Airport Warrior is five miles final for runway 26, full stop horn. And then I'm using my airspeed to confirm airspeed is here or airspeed is here to confirm that my pitch attitude is correct. If I'm too slow, I can lower the nose. If I'm too fast, I can raise the nose a little bit more. Once I get to 800 feet, which is 400 above the ground, my flaps will come up. And if I keep the same attitude, my airspeed will be faster with the flaps up. I want to climb at about 75 once my flaps are up. Now the next checkpoint that I am looking for is within 300 feet of pattern altitude. Pattern altitude is 1,400 feet. So when I get to 1,100, any time after that, I could make my crosswind turn. I'm just about there. Before I make any turns, though, I'm going to look out the window and make sure nobody is over there so that I know that I'm clear to turn. Looks pretty clear, so I'm going to start a nice, easy turn to the right. Orange County, Diamond 3, Delta Alpha, right crosswind, runway 22, Orange County. And I'm going to make a radio call, letting people know where I am and what I'm doing. The basic rules in flying are see and avoid. And then following kind of the standards of the traffic pattern involve being predictable so people know where to look for you. And radio communications are a big part of that. So now that I'm at pattern altitude, or slightly above it actually, I overshot that just a little, I'm gonna bring power back so that I'm not super fast now that I'm not climbing anymore. Orange County, Diamond 3 Delta Alpha, right downwind, runway 22, Orange County. So I'm gonna look for about 90 knots on my downwind at this point. And while I'm turning downwind here, I'm looking to parallel the runway on my warrior, right. Short final runway 26 corner. And I'm gonna run a quick gumps check. So I'm gonna check my gas. My undercarriage, I have brake pressure and my parking brake is off. My mixture is full rich. My pump is on, my additional auxiliary fuel pump. Uh, and then S is seat, seat belts, and switches. These seat backs are not rec re, uh, reclining, so I don't have to worry about putting them back up. I have my seat belt on, and switches could be my lights, which are all configured. Now, planning ahead a little bit, when I'm even with the end of the runway is when I want to get my takeoff flaps in. To do that, I need to be below 100 knots. So if I was a little bit too fast, I'm looking ahead for that checkpoint, and I'm going to slow the airplane down. I am below 100 knots, I'm even with the end of the runway, so I'm going to put my takeoff flaps down. When I do, I need to lower the nose just a little bit, because the flaps deflect more air down and make more lift at the same speed. So if I don't do anything, the airplane's going to gain some altitude and slow down because I climb, and I want to kind of control my deceleration through the traffic pattern. So the next leg that I'm looking for is my base leg. And when I'm on base, I want to get my landing flaps in. Landing flaps, I need to be below 78 knots so I can put those landing flaps down. So I'm by planning a lead ahead a little bit here, I can keep slowing the airplane down to about 80, just under 80, so that when I make that turn, and then I'm looking over my shoulder to make that turn, so I have the end of the runway about a 45 degree angle behind me. Orange County, Diamond 3 Delta Alpha, turning right base, runway 22, full stop landing, Orange County. So, I'm going to make that turn. This is looking pretty good. My airspeed is just under 78. I'm going to slow it down even a little bit more just to be safe. And there we go. Yeah, landing flaps coming down. 45, a little left there with 28. With my landing flaps, I'm going to visually confirm, looking outside, my flaps are down. If my flaps didn't come down, I would change my approach angle because I don't have those flaps helping slow me down, so I need to come in shallower. Now, Sky up 623, five plan ahead on this turn so that I can make it a nice, shallow, easy turn because my airspeed is much slower here than in normal operation, right? 
And now I'm on final. Orange County, Diamond 3 Delta Alpha, final runway 22, full stop landing, Orange County. Now on final, I want to be about 60 knots of airspeed. So I'm going to trim the airplane for 60 knots as well. And I'll fly 60 all the way in. I'll make changes to where I am and where I'm going to end up using the power setting. So if I bring power out, I'll descend steeper. And if I stay like this, I might even come up a little bit short. If I bring a little power in, I could glide much further. If I bring too much power in, I'm going to climb and not land at all, right? So using power, I'm going to adjust where I'm going to end up. But I'm going to maintain 60 knots all the way through this final. And I've got the airplane trimmed to fly 60. And now I'm paying attention to where the airplane is going. I can go no hands because I trimmed the airplane to stay at 60 knots. I'm making small power adjustments to keep everything very stable and predictable down to the runway. If I bring power out, I would have to lower the nose to stay at 60. So it's not maintaining the same pitch attitude. It's maintaining the same airspeed. And I'm also not going to overfly the airplane. I'm going to let the airplane fly. It flies, I pilot, I steer. So I'm going to just let the airplane go where I want it to go. We're coming in. As I get closer to the runway, I will very smoothly bring the power back to idle. Keep it smooth. You don't want to upset your nice approach. Nice and smooth. And then we're going to play the game, don't let the wheels touch. I'm going to keep raising the nose to slow the airplane down more and more and more to get a very high nose angle like this before my wheels touch. That way I have a nice slow airspeed. The airplane can't bounce and fly again because it's going too slow to fly. It's not making enough lift to lift its own weight at this point. Now that my wheels have touched, I'm still holding that back pressure. If I let go, you can see the stick wants to come forwards. Holding that back pressure to keep the weight off the nose wheel. It also helps me slow down, and I'm just going to roll to a stop here. I might add a little bit of power just because there were some people waiting for the runway, and I don't want to roll quite that slow on my way off here. Now as I'm braking, power is to idle, and I'm going to pull all the way back on the stick for aerodynamic braking. Now, I am not clear of the runway until I cross what's called the hold short lines up here. So there are dotted lines, kind of looks like the center line on the runway, and then there are solid lines. So until my entire airplane has crossed this, I am not clear of the runway. Now I am clear. Orange County, Diamond 3 Delta Alpha, clear of runway 22, Orange County. And I'm going to make a radio call letting everybody else know that I'm clear of the runway. So in terms of sharing the airport, now everybody knows the runway is open again. There's no airplanes on it.